Good morning, wet shavers, coffee lovers, and podcast listeners everywhere. It's Mark with GeorgeTune.com. It's time for another second cup. So grab a cup of coffee, kick back, relax, put in your earbuds, adjust your speaker volume, and let's talk some wet shaving and a few other things in podcast form. Just so you know, Second Cup is a podcast that will give you some additional information that didn't make the Monday morning mailbag deadline. This might be something that is time sensitive. For instance, a sale that could be ending before the next three MB airs or a piece of late breaking information that viewers have passed along that is equally time sensitive or something else regarding the wet shaving world that needs to be broadcast in a timely fashion. And we'll also have some time to chit chat and discuss some other things like coffee, movies, streaming shows, books, that sort of thing. So thanks for tuning in to Second Cup. And I hope you subscribe to the podcast where you can also find episodes of the Monday Morning Mailbag in podcast form. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. We'll get the show underway in just a moment. Thanks for joining me. Well, good morning and welcome to the May 15th, 2023 episode of Second Cup. I had to think there for a while. My gosh, this year is flying by. It's already May. The weather is nice and warm. I can remember back in the winter, uh, you know, January, February, March. When is it going to warm up? When are we going to be done with this cold weather? And here it is in the blink of an eye. It's May. It's warming up. Everything is in full bloom. Oh, it's just wonderful. And summer's right around the corner, which means uh, time to get on the road and do some uh, one tank trip trips and travel and get togethers with family and oh, all kinds of great holidays coming up. Yeah, it really is uh, a great, great time of the year. And I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me, which uh, reminds me uh, this morning, and here you can hear my receipt right here. I stopped at my... Um, Local Trader Joe's, and I picked up right here their um, uh, instant coffee packets that are all dressed up with creamer and sugar. Just add water, ideal for travel. Says that right on the box, and these are absolutely fantastic. Hang on one minute. Yes, absolutely fantastic. And uh, only $2.29 for a 10 pack. These are great for travel. Uh, all you have to do is have these with you, and if you want a cup of coffee, just get a hot, uh, a hot water, and boom, you got yourself a really delightful cup of coffee uh, in an instant. And it is very flavorful. It is has just the amount of uh, just the right amount of sugar and creamer in it. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, because summer's coming up, we'll be doing some traveling, some one tank trips, that sort of thing. So if you're looking for something to take with you on the road for a quick cup of coffee, check out Trader Joe's Instant Coffee Packets, all dressed up with creamer and sugar. You get 10 of them for $2.29. I mention this because I'm going to throw a few into my uh, travel bag for uh, the June 3rd Maggard Wet Shave Meetup in Adrian, Michigan, June 3rd, 2023. Now, at the time I'm recording this, there are still tickets available. So if you're in this neck of the woods and uh, want to attend what is promising to be a really nice wet shave meetup, check out Maggard Razor's 6th annual, I believe it is, 6th annual wet shave meetup, June 3rd, 2023. And again, uh, you know, you can do it as a weekend getaway. You can do it as a one tank trip, that sort of thing. I'm going to try to do it as a one tank trip because it's not that far of a drive for me. So I'm really looking forward to attending it. Uh, I already have my ticket uh, purchased. Uh, I purchased it back in February, I think, when it was first announced. I grabbed it because I missed it the last time around. And uh, yeah, boy, I'm really looking forward to going to this one. Uh, also went to the uh, Ohio Wet Shavers meetup in uh, Columbus last fall. That was my first wet shave meetup. That was delightful. That was also a one tank trip. So I'm looking forward to this one at Maggard's Razors in Adrian, Michigan. And I hope that uh, if you're in that neck of the woods, I uh, hope you get a ticket and I hope to see you there. So just wanted to mention that to you uh, because it's, you know, summer's right around the corner. We'll be doing some traveling and I'm really looking forward to it. Now, the reason why I created the Second Cup podcast, and you heard that in the intro, 
is to offer some late-breaking information or other information that didn't make the Monday morning mailbag deadline. And here is a perfect example. I saw this after the Monday morning mailbag was edited and completed, uploaded, and scheduled. And here it is from Phoenix Shaving. 11235 Artisan Shaving Soap. Now, I'm looking at the Artisan Shaving Soap and Aftershave Bundle deal in the CK6. Uh, and it's called 11235. I don't know if it's pronounced uh, 11235 or 11235 or 11235. I'm not sure. But uh, it promises to be absolutely wonderful. Uh, and uh, the price of the bundle is $45.90. That's the shave soap and the aftershave together. The first 50 CK6 bundles come with a limited edition holographic label. Uh, and here's what they have to say about this. 11235 or 11235 is our take on a classic, fresh, true cologne fragrance with a scent formulation in history that goes back over 200 years 4711. Here's the uh, scent profile. Aldehydic, neroli, citrus, green, mint, pettigrain, lavender, earthy, woody, herbal. Yes, and they go on to say, fresh, classy, and a summertime favorite, 4711 is widely known and accepted as the original Eau de Cologne, EDT, due to its geographical birthplace an original date of creation sometime in the early 18th century in Cologne, Germany. The scent was designed to be fresh and invigorating, herbal and light. Perfect for summer or when you want something a bit brighter. The citrus notes are anchored by earth and wood, allowing the scent to mellow nicely and to provide a bit of warmth to the overall blend. We first introduced this scent in May of 2015 and we discontinued it in May of 2018. For this 2023 release, we have reworked the scent a bit, creating what we think is an even better homage with our unique spin. We're excited to bring this scent back, and we hope we can keep it around for a long time, or at least as a spring and summer seasonal. So there you are. I'll have a link to it below in the description. Check it out. This is from Phoenix Shaving. 11235, or again, maybe it's 11235, Artisan Shaving Soap and Aftershave Bundle Deal. I'll link both the bundle and just the shaving soap. Uh, so you can you can kind of look at both of them, but uh, probably a better deal to get them both because that's what I usually, usually have in my shave den. And I often forget to get the star jelly with it. I got to remember to get the star jelly because... As you know, after my shave, I like to apply a balm uh, on top of my bald head there, upstairs, as I like to say. And that really does help keep my skin up there nicely conditioned and free of flaking and uh, other, other problems that you could have uh, from uh, having a bald head. So I love the star jelly. So I have to remember that if I get this uh, 11235 uh, to uh, get that star jelly with it. Yeah, absolutely. So check it out. I have a link below. It's something that came across the wire, uh, so to speak, after I um, finished uh, the Monday morning mailbag. So happy to share it with you here on Second Cup from Phoenix Shaving, 11235 Artisan Shaving Soap and Aftershave, the bundle deal. Check it out. I'll have links below. Okay, you hear this? Right there. You know what that is? That's an above the tie box, and inside is a brand new above the tie safety razor. This is the, uh, here, let me open it up for you, okay? And they give you a, kind of an envelope here with a business card and also a packet here. Uh, it has a polishing cloth and some O-rings, that sort of thing. Let me get rid of this other packet. I'll explain what's in that later, just a little bit. Here it is right here. This is a... Um, and above the tie razor right here, this is the Windsor Pro in stainless steel. Now, we've been talking about the above the tie clearance sale. Viewer Stanley Piaskowski alerted us to this and said, Hey, Mark, above the tie is closing their doors and they have this huge clearance sale going on. And we announced it on Second Cup and we've kind of been, we've been giving updates regarding that clearance sale. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at it right now online as I'm recording this. 
Anyhow, they had a variety of razors, base plates, caps, handles, that sort of thing that they were being that they were selling. And once that inventory was gone, that was it. It was gone. So I went up there about the time I made the announcement and got word from Stanley Piaskowski. And I have never owned an above the tie razor until now. And I'm sorry that it happened to have that it happened under these circumstances. Um, but I thought, well, I'd like to have one for the collection. And uh, I saw that the, uh, the Windsor Pro in stainless steel was still available. So I went ahead and I purchased it. Now, if you followed Second Cup, you also know, just let me set this down. You'll also know that at one point, they were so overwhelmed by orders. Uh, they had a hard time sorting things out. So they put a pause on the sale and said, look, we have to go through all these orders, figure out what we have left in stock, figure out who ordered what when. So you're either going to get the, uh, the article that you ordered or you're going to get a refund. And when I read that, I thought, well, you know what? I kind of came late to the party here. So um, I'm probably getting a refund. And uh, shortly thereafter, you know, in the mail, here, lo and behold, here it is, the, um, the Windsor Pro in stainless steel from above the tie. Now, I was delighted to have it. Again, unfortunately, I'm sorry that they're closing their doors, but I'm happy to have an above the tie razor in my collection. I bought this blindly, so to speak. I just saw that, oh, stainless steel razor, Windsor Pro. I didn't see a lot of anything else there. I just thought, oh, I got to have an above the tie razor. And I went ahead and ordered it. After the fact, I found out that it's rated as, uh, it's, it's from, I guess, 1 to 9, 1 to 10 on the, on the scale of aggressiveness. It's rated 9. And I thought, oh my gosh, I am going to have probably one of the most aggressive shaves in all my life. So I ran back up to the site there and I thought, well, you know what, maybe I can find a base plate that is mild. And then looking through the charts and looking what was it available, I'm opening up right here. Uh, I saw a base plate that I think would give me a milder shave because I'm thinking this Windsor Pro is gonna be too aggressive. So I went ahead and I purchased um, an M2 open comb base plate. And uh, this fits nicely on the razor. And uh, there, I was assured of having uh, a mild shave because it's rated this particular base plate. When you look at their chart of how things rate, uh, the SB90 base plate, which is on this Windsor Pro, is at nine. And this uh, M2 is rated at mild. I can't remember what number it was. I'll have to look at that. But uh, it's rated mild. So, okay, there, that's great. I decided to have a shave with this razor uh, with the uh, SB90 base plate. Uh, that's what it's called right there? Yeah, the SB90 base plate. That's the base plate on the Windsor Pro. And I believe this is what they call the Cronus handle. Very nice handle, beautiful knurling on it, very nice tight knurling, assures a great grip. And it is a polished stainless steel and it looks just wonderful. It has beautiful half, beautiful balance. All right, so I decided to have a shave with this. I've already done a review of this. And I got to tell you, this did not feel like a nine to me at all. I mean, this felt mild. And I thought, wow, I don't think I need that M2 mild base plate. This SB90 is a one heck of a mild shave. However, I think it's deceptively mild. In, in filming my review, uh, I did a third pass, and yeah, there was some slight stinging from the Allen block. Not just zinging, some slight stinging, which told me, wow, I got a really, really close shave. But it was wonderfully smooth, wonderfully smooth, very efficient, and I didn't get any stinging or zinging uh, to the point where there was going to be irritation there. It was just a, a really invigorating kind of a stinging, zinging kind of a feel, if, I, if, if, if you will. Really, really terrific, terrific shave. I love this razor. And uh, I'm just kicking myself that I didn't buy two of them when I originally ordered. Now, again, you know, I thought for sure after I ordered it, I was going to get a refund, that it wasn't going to come through. But I got lucky, and this came through. Wow, what a great, great razor. What a great, great shave. The point is, is that if you 
know of someone or you see someplace that is selling this uh, Windsor Pro razor in stainless steel, snap it up. This is really a terrific, terrific razor. Now, they do have their aluminum version on closeout for $34. It's available right now as I am uh, writing this, uh, recording this rather. And uh, you know what? I went up there and I grabbed one of the aluminum ones as well. Now, the aluminum one doesn't have the heft of the stainless steel, but boy, oh boy, oh boy, the shave is just as efficient. And as you know, uh, the aluminum razors that I have used from Timeless, from Phoenix Shaving, uh, from Razor Rock, uh, and some others out there, uh, Henson, have just given me some delightful, delightful shaves. They are a bit more maneuverable, a bit more, a bit more nimble because of the lighter weight, but there is still that efficiency and the razor head and the blade does all the work. Really, really remarkable. So if you have a chance, $34 for the Windsor Pro Aluminum Safety Razor, get up there and grab one of these. These, these, This Windsor Pro Razor in stainless steel is marvelous. I have the one in aluminum. I did a shave with this one as well. Wow, it was really, really a good shave. And again, they rate it as 9 uh, the aggressive level is nine. It did not feel like a nine to me. Very efficient, very, very close shave. And again, I got a little bit of feedback from the Allen block. In other words, I can do, uh, I think the review had two days worth of beard growth. So I did do a third pass. If I recall correctly, it was, a, it was two days worth of beard growth. So I did do a, two days worth of beard growth. So I did do three passes. But this razor, two passes, is more than enough. If I have one day's worth of beard growth, I think three passes might be pushing a little bit. But I had two days worth of beard growth, and this razor did an absolutely splendid job. And it looks great. Polished stainless steel. Um, terrific, terrific heft. Nice balance. It just looks uh, wonderful. It's, you know, it looks like a life. It, it's a lifetime razor. Not looks like. It is a lifetime razor. And the aluminum version, which I'm holding right here, uh, grab one of these. It's up there right now at the time I'm recording this, $34 and above the tie. I don't think you're going to be disappointed in the Windsor Pro Aluminum at all. Don't let that nine aggressive rating scare you away. I think it'll be fine. Okay, obviously your mileage may vary, but I was surprised because when I first shaved with both of these razors, I thought, wow, I'm going to have to really lighten up, my, uh, lighten up on my touch and really be careful, much like I would with an R41 from uh, Mula. And, and no, it was, it was so smooth. I even wrote the folks at Above the Tie, and I said, this is rated 9? It, it felt so mild. And they said, well, we, we engineered the razor to be very, very smooth. Such a shame that they're going out of business because an absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful razor. I'm kicking myself for two reasons. Number one, that I didn't get an above-the-tie razor sooner while they were still in business. And number two, had I known that this razor would be this good, I would have bought a second one just to have. Because, you know, uh, we talk about travel uh, right now, and uh, this is definitely a razor I would throw in my dop kit for those one tank trips, weekend getaways kinds of things. Now, if I had an extra one, if for some reason I lost it, I would feel terrible, I'd still have a backup. But you know what? If I take this traveling and I lose it, it's gone forever. So this is going to stay home. But you know what? If I <laughs> if I had a, a spare one, uh, boy, I, I certainly would pack that away to uh, to travel with, not fly. I'm not talking about packing it in your dop kit and uh, putting it in with your carry-on luggage because as I understand it, a TSA agent has the final call as to what can be allowed in your carry-on. And uh, yeah, I have heard where safety razors sometimes are confiscated even though the blades aren't present in the carry-on. So I'm talking about a road trip. This razor would be wonderful for a weekend getaway road trip. Uh, it just gives a wonderful, delightful shave. But my point is, is if I had a spare, if I had uh, an extra one, I'm more likely to travel with this, uh, with this uh, Windsor Pro in stainless steel. But because I only have one, <laughs> it's staying home. I don't want to risk losing it 
Because if I lose it or forget it or leave it behind, whatever, it's gone forever. That's my point. But uh, yeah, if uh, if I had an extra one, this I would definitely pack this and take this on the road with me on a road trip. Absolutely would, no doubt. It's just a fantastic razor. And uh, again, if you see one for sale uh, on eBay or through a shaving form, uh, another wet shaver uh, feels that they would like to sell it. Maybe they've got several of them. Whatever the reason is, uh, wow, snap it up. It is an absolutely terrific razor. And again, the reminder is on the Windsor Aluminum, the Windsor Pro Aluminum Safety Razor, Closeout sale, regularly $54. It's $34 right now. So that is a really, really nice price point for a terrific aluminum razor and uh, delivers a wonderful, wonderful shave. Again, they rated at 9. I didn't feel it at 9. I, I thought it was milder than 9, although I think it's deceptively mild. You are getting a somewhat more aggressive, efficient shave so, yeah, uh, you're going to get a great shave with it. So, uh, just so you know, and again, your mileage may vary. So, we'll have the review on the Windsor Pro uh, stainless steel uh, version of the Safety Razor uh, coming up here sometime soon. It's already been recorded, and I just have to edit it and get it uploaded and that sort of thing. And I look forward to doing the review on the aluminum version as well. And as far as this M2 plate, I've used it, but you know, i got to be honest with you, I don't know if it's something that I'm going to be consistently using because this Windsor Pro razor is such a wonderful, delightful, smooth performer. Really, really fantastic. So check it out. Uh, at the Above the Tie uh, closeout sale, the Windsor Pro Aluminum Safety Razor, $34. And if you can ever, if you ever come across the Windsor Pro Stainless Steel Razor for sale at a fair price, let me put it to you that way, at a fair price, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, snap it up. It is really a fantastic, fantastic razor. I'm sorry I didn't get two. I'm sorry I didn't buy it sooner. Viewer Beth Jones checked in with this late-breaking piece of wet shave gear information, and she writes, Good afternoon, Mark. Here's a link to a new product drop at West Coast Shaving. Yeah, this is absolutely beautiful. This is West Coast Shaving's American Liberty CNC Safety Razor. Regularly $181. It's marked down to $145. And this item ships free. That's right there on their product page. I'll make sure to link it. It's 316 unpolished stainless steel, a classic three-piece double-edged safety razor, CNC machine from stainless steel. And as they write here, West Coast Shaving loves to help newbies fall in love with wet shaving. That's why we are crafting products that are high quality but affordable. We want to make sure everyone gets a great shave. This American Liberty CNC safety razor is the perfect razor for a new shaver or a long timer looking for a new tool. CNC, computer numerical control, is a process that ensures consistent exacting specifications so you get a strong, reliable tool. This is a three-piece double-edged safety razor with a beautifully cut handle. The stars and stripes stand out as an homage to the grand old flag and help provide the grip you need. The razor head was designed by Charcoal Goods with amazing geometry to give you a mild but efficient shave. The matte finish of the head and handle create a lovely presentation. The weight will do the work of mowing down those hairs. The West Coast shaving logo laser on the bottom of the base plate lets you know you are getting quality. Now, the weight of the handle is 80 grams. The weight of the overall razor is 112 grams. The length of the handle is 89 millimeters, and the blade gap is 1.5 millimeters. It is an absolutely stunningly good-looking razor. Love the handle. Love the stars and stripes on the handle. It is absolutely amazing. You have to see this. I will link it below. My sincere thanks to Beth Jones for passing along the heads up on the West Coast Shaving American Liberty CNC Safety Razor. Folks, check this one out. It is an absolutely beautiful work of art. Thanks again to Beth Jones. Viewer William Kilber wrote, I absolutely love cold water shaves. So invigorating. 
Cheers from on the road here in St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> hey, thanks very much, William. Sounds like you're on the road. Sounds like you're traveling and you're just checking in from St. Louis. Hey, th- thanks very, very much. And yes, we've talked about cold water shaves before, uh, helping to cut down in irritation and nicks and cuts and that sort of thing. And a lot of the uh, folks out there in the audience uh, and other fellow wet shavers absolutely love doing the cold water shave for those very reasons. And I've done the cold water shave. I enjoy a cold water shave, especially during those hot summer months. I prefer warm water shaves. However, I think I will be a more consistent cold water shaver uh, in the coming weeks and months here. And why is that? Well, if you tuned into today's Monday morning mailbag, uh, we got a, an absolutely wonderful, wonderful link to a YouTube series tutorial on how to do the straight razor shave from Chuck Price. Chuck Price, uh, as you know, donated an absolutely beautiful vintage antique straight razor for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. And Chuck is also a straight razor shaver. And he has been encouraging me to learn how to shave with a straight razor. And I've always been intrigued. Well, he sent along this tutorial. And there are about six chapters in this tutorial, and it's by a gentleman named Handel Barber Dave. And this gentleman absolutely walks you through the process of doing a straight razor shave uh, beautifully. Uh, He is so good, so informative. He is able to break down the entire shave process from the gear used to a few shortcuts and learning how to strop to uh, understanding the different parts of the uh, straight razor, the correct angle to shave at, uh, etc. But the thing he recommends in that first video, and I've seen the first video already. I, when, I, when I recorded the Monday morning mail back, I had not looked at any of the videos in the tutorial. I kind of wanted to go in fresh, and now I've had a chance to uh, watch one because I didn't want to overpromise on the Monday morning mail back. It looked really, it looked like it was produced very, very well. However, I sat down and I watched that first episode. It is fabulous. And in that first episode, Handle Barber Dave says, use cold water when you're learning how to first use a straight razor. Use cold water. Why? Well, it's the reduction of irritation, nicks, cuts, that sort of thing. And he goes through the scientific explanation of it. Uh, You'll, even if you're not going to do a straight razor shave, check that episode out just to understand uh, what straight razor razor shaving is, uh, the, the different parts of the straight razor, the technique, and also why he recommends using cold water when you're first learning how to do the uh, shave with the straight razor. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic tutorial series. And uh, really, I, I, I just think it's uh, absolutely fabulous. So if you get a chance uh, to um, you know get some free time, check it out. I'll link it again below. Handle Barber Dave's uh, tutorial on how to do the straight razor shave. It really is very, very well produced, very, very informative. And there is a little bit of, tre- there was a little bit of trepidation or is a little bit of trepidation. Was a little bit of trepidation? Let me put it this way. There was some trepidation on my part to go forward with the uh, straight razor shave only because I didn't fully understand it. This series of tutorials is really giving me the confidence and easing uh, my concerns. It's, it's, it's allowing me to really understand how to do the shave. And, uh, you know, if you're armed with all those facts and you have that understanding, you're more likely to be successful. Now, will I start doing the straight razor shave right off the bat? It's going to take time. It's going to take time to, to slowly develop. And he even stresses this. Handlebar David, or Handlebar Dave, even stresses this in his uh, tutorial. It takes time, and the straight razor shave is is not something you're going to wake up in the morning and do really quickly and run out the door. It's not that way. It's really a different kind of shave where you 
Really, really take your time. For me, you know, it's a Sunday morning shave. It's a Saturday morning shave when I don't have to be anywhere. I could just go into the shave den and take my time and have a really, really wonderful shave with a straight razor. Something I always wanted to do. My late brother Dave, my kid brother, uh, he always expressed an interest in wanting to learn how to use a straight razor. So I think in uh, his memory, I'm going to go forward and learn how to do this uh, for my brother Dave because uh, he always told me, we, we lived together for a number of years, uh, and he always told me, you know what, I always wanted to learn how to shave with a straight razor. So, um, yeah, I think that's why I'm going to go forward. But it's going to take time. You're not going to see any reviews popping up on my channel right away because it's going to take time. And uh, it definitely is, uh, there is definitely a learning curve there. And you have to develop your muscle memory in order to, uh, you know, really, really nail down the proper technique in using a straight razor. So I wanted to pass that on to you that, yeah, cold water shaves are very, very beneficial. And uh, Handle Barber Dave points out when learning how to use a straight razor, cold water because of all those benefits. So my thanks again to uh, viewer William Kilber out there for uh, submitting that comment. It kind of led right into our discussion of straight razor shaving. Thanks very, very much, Wilbur. Really do appreciate it. Safe travels. Before I get out of here, I want to recommend a book to you because summer means summer reading time, and that's usually when I catch up on a lot of my reading. And there's one book in particular, I don't think I've ever mentioned it before, but I want to recommend it to you. It really is a terrific, terrific book. It's by Mark Twain, and it's called Personal Recollections of Joan of Arc. It really is a terrific, terrific uh, novel. And uh, as they write here on Wikipedia, Personal Recollections of Joan of Arc by the Sieur Louis de Conte is an 1896 novel by Mark Twain, which recounts the life of Joan of Arc. The novel is presented as a translation by Jean-Francois Alden of memoirs by Louis de Conte, a fictionalized version of Joan of Arc's page, Louis de Contes. The novel is divided into three sections according to Joan of Arc's development, a youth in Domremy, a commander of the army of Charles VII of France, and a defendant at trial in Rouen. The novel was first published as a serialization in Harper's Magazine beginning in April 1895. Twain was aware of his reputation as a comic writer, and he asked that each installment appear anonymously so that readers would treat it seriously. Regardless, his authorship soon became known, and Harper and Brothers published the book edition with his name in May 1896. Yeah, that really is a, an amazing little bit of a twist there because it is a very serious novel. And I'm reminded that Twain regarded it as his favorite book that he ever wrote. And he actually traveled to France, and he was fluent in French, and he translated court records and incorporated those into his book. And uh, he had a real respect and high regard for Joan of Arc. And it comes through in the book. And I have grown to really love and respect Joan of Arc. It really is a fascinating history of her life, a very engaging book, and one that really affected me deeply. I absolutely love this book, and I can understand why Mark Twain regarded it as his greatest book. Uh, it's not Mark Twain. It's not Huckleberry Finn. It's none of the earlier stuff that he wrote. He felt that Joan of Arc was his best work, and there was some sort of personal attachment to it. Not sure exactly what it was, but uh, I think he spent 12 years in doing research and, and getting, getting ready to write this book, and it really is uh, a wonderful book, very satisfying, and I recommend it to everybody I meet. If they're looking for something to read during the summer, this is a really, really very, very satisfying book, and I really loved it. It's extraordinary. It really is one of Mark Twain's 
finest works. Now, you can download it for free on Project Gutenberg because it was written in 1896. It's in public domain. So you can go up to Project Gutenberg and, and um, download uh, each volume separately. There are three volumes. Or I think there are probably uh, areas of Project Gutenberg where you can download the entire book uh, as one uh, one book, uh, three volumes in one book, that sort of thing. And um, because it, uh, it uh, is a lot of pages there, <laughs> I, I felt that uh, reading it on my Kindle was the best way, the most convenient way. And again, it's free. All you have to do is go up to Project Gutenberg and download it, and you can read it for free. Uh, I'm sure you can go up to Amazon and go into their book department there, and you could probably get uh, Joan of Arc, uh, the entire uh, uh, book, all three volumes in one download for your Kindle for probably, I don't know, 99 cents, something like that. If you want to do it that way, that's another way to do it. The point is, is that it's available, it's free, and all you have to do is go up to Project Gutenberg, do a search for uh, Joan of Arc by Mark Twain, and all the different variations will come right up. I really, really enjoyed it. It's perfect. It's a perfect book for summer reading. I really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorites, and I hope it becomes one of your favorites too. Personal Recollections of Joan of Arc by Mark Twain. And that wraps up another Second Cup. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. I sure hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, please share, please subscribe, and pass it along to a fellow wet shaver or friend. My thanks to everyone who contributed to today's show. And I mean this sincerely. Without you, this microphone would be silent. If Second Cup or the Monday Morning Mailbag aren't showing up in your regular podcast feed, please drop me a line at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and we'll try to get it all sorted out. So again, thank you all very much. I look forward to getting together with you again on these podcast airwaves. Until then, enjoy the day, enjoy your shave, and enjoy that second cup.